All right, absolute value inequalities. First thing, let's review. Ryan, what do you know about absolute value? Okay, you're gonna be using a number line. Very good. We got a bunch of number lines up here. Matt, do you know anything about absolute value that you would care to share? Not really, okay. Ronan? Greater and less than signs with the inequality ones. Very good. Tristan? There's a variable. Anybody else have anything else we could add to this? G? Wait, are they the lines? They are the lines. Yeah, Very good, which is, it, it represents distance is what you're saying, but distance is always positive. positive. And that's the key thing with absolute value that a lot of kids start to forget. Because you get roped in with mathematics, like you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. But Mateo, there's so much more to math and a lot of it is just being logical, okay? So today's lesson is not so much about the math, but it's about just being logical and doing the problems like using your brain, so to say, and you're not. Now, Ronan, I see your eyes are big and wide. You're like, what is going on today? Why is Harvin talking like this? Like, just tell me what I got to do. But I can't because you got to see it. Now, Ronan, you heard G said absolute value is always positive, right? So no matter what it is, it's positive. Agreed? All right, so here we go. This says what, Ronnie? Can you read that to me? The absolute value. Okay. Gee, what did you say? You said what about absolute value? So this is some positive number, right? Positive hashtag. Agreed? So some positive number, think of your favorite positive number. Mine's five because I was born on January 5th. Also, the sum of the first two primes is five. Two plus three, five. That comes back there. Okay, positive number is less than negative one. What type of numbers are less than negative one? Negative numbers, right? Negative numbers are less than negative one, agree? So how could a positive number be less than a negative number? Is that possible? So guess what? This is no solution. It's because no matter what I plug in for k, it's always going to be a positive number. So at the end of the day, I can never have a positive number being less than a negative number. So Tate, do you see how you like use your brain there? All right, Dan. Dan at home, phone in the front. Yes. So Dan, absolute value is always? Positive. Positive. Since absolute value is always positive, I'm kind of thinking, well, this is going to be some type of positive number. And that is greater than negative four. Is that true? Dan, would you say that's true? What? Would you say a positive number is always greater than a negative number? Yeah. So let's look at this. In the first one, we had the positive number was being less than negative one, and that wasn't true. There's no solution. Here, we have a positive number being greater than a negative number. So this is actually infinite solution. And what it looks like for infinite solution is this. Notice, I didn't graph anything up here, did I? Down here, my answer is just the whole line issue. We good? Emily, are you okay? You're just like really tired. Did the wind keep you up last night? Crazy. Did you see the clip of New York? Oh, they issued a tornado warning in New York. Well, yeah, because of all the buildings. 
you you walked around like Philly and you like you turn the corner of all the sun, you get hit with a wall of wind. So all the buildings in New York with straight winds just funnel the wind. There's just ripping stuff down the street. There's nuts. Nuts. Emily, can you help me out a little bit with case number three? All I want to know is what's my first step? What do I do to solve this? Number three. How would I get rid of that plus 14? I'm going to subtract. So I subtract that 14, I get the absolute value of k plus 3 is greater than 0. OK. This looks kind of better, more typical of what we've been doing, right? In the sense, Ryan, before it was a negative number, right? And we were like, oh, absolute value is always greater than a negative number, or absolute value can never be less than a negative number. But here we have zero, right? Zero is more like a positive number than a negative number, right? So we're kind of feeling better about that, even though zero is not positive or negative. Okay. So, Ryan, let's see what happens. Let's break this apart because I don't know what to do when it's zero, right? So I have k plus three is greater than zero, right? And on this side, I have k plus three is less than negative zero, right? Because we have zero and you take the negative of that. You see how I did that? Oh, well, you'll see in a second, okay? Ryan, how do I get rid of that plus three? Yeah, I minus it. And I have k is greater than negative three. And over here, Ben's like, yo, Harvey, come on. I thought you were a math teacher. You got a, you got a master's in math. Why are you putting negative two? Well, Ben, I'm putting that negative there so that you know there's always a positive side to the absolute value and there's always a negative side. I know that it's always zero, but I don't want you to confuse that. It's always, you have your positive, and then you have your negative. Notice I flip my sign too. So I subtract three, and I get k's less than negative three. So let's, let's see what happens here. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. So this one says, Ben, put a circle at Negative three, it's an open circle. It says k is greater than, so I'm shading that way. And then this one says put a circle at negative three, okay. It's open, and it says it's less than, huh. So look at that. It's basically like the whole line, except for what number? What number is not filled in? Negative three. So this is, all real numbers except for negative three. And math people are really lazy, okay? Really lazy. And in the words of Ben, yo, Harmon, writing all real numbers except for negative three is doing too much. Not about that. So mathematicians kind of came up with this symbol. It's kind of like an R with two legs. So it stands for all real numbers except x equals negative three. So it can be anything except for negative three. All right, you have two problems down here, five and six. Okay, why don't you guys try those, five and six. Yeah. Well, yeah, he doesn't have his book, so he's told him not to worry and just soak it in. All right. It's like the last page. All 
right there. Right, uh, two values always positive, right? So it says a positive number is less than a negative number. That's not possible. That would be no solution. All right. All right, you guys should be done. I know, it seems like it was quick, but the first one was really easy, wasn't it, Ronan? What did you get for the first one, Ronan? No solution. Did you show any work? No, why? Yeah, the absolute value, you can't just go by the negative. You gotta notice the absolute value is by itself, right? See that? And it says it's less than a negative number, meaning, a positive number is going to end up being less than a negative. That's not possible. That's all the work it is. So number five is done. Done. Now, number six is a little trickier, right? A little trickier. Zach, what's your first step in number six? What did you do? Or what should I do? Uh, I did plus three. Plus three. Okay. I agree, I like that. So I have the absolute values by itself. So we have the absolute value of something is greater than negative three. What's my answer then, Zach? Uh, infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. Let's turn the page and let's go to Miss Salazar. Miss Salazar, how are you today? You doing all right? Okay. Lily, how are you doing today? Good. Awesome. Now, Lily, can you help me out with this problem? Sure. All right. Lily, what type of circle should I have for this? Open or closed? So we're paying attention to that. Symbol right there. They could be open circles or closed circles. Closed. Closed. Now, do any of my answers have open circles? No. No, so that didn't help me. But that's okay. Took me zero seconds to look at that. Now, Lily. Does this symbol mean an and or or inequality? So when the absolute value is greater than a number, is that an and or an or inequality? Or, very good. Now, does that help me? And it doesn't. Unfortunately, none of my shortcuts worked here, but it was worth a shot, right? So we have the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 5. So on the left hand side, we have 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 5. And on the right hand side, we have 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 5. So, Lily, how do I get rid of that minus 1? So it's add one. So if we add one, we have two X is greater than six. And then what, Lily? Five. 
divide by two. Very good. So I have x is greater than or equal to three. Now, this is what I like to say, stop and smell the roses. Sounds kind of weird, but my roses are my answers. And I'm going to look at them. Why am I going to look at them? Well, sometimes when I have half the problem done, I can eliminate answers, right? If X is greater than or equal to three. Well, that one has a circle of three, so I'm good. This one has a circle of two, so it's not B. This one has a circle of three, so I'm good. D, that one's two. Guess what? I just got it down to a 50-50, which is nice. Now I have to do the other side. So let's see. So let's add the other side. So we have 2x is less than or equal to negative 4. Divide by 2. And we have x is less than or equal to negative 2. Oh, there we go. My answer is x. All right, so I like to stop in the middle of my problem and I like to eliminate things as I go along. Why? Because say I make a mistake on that other side. Well, then I eliminated already down to like A and C. So now I get to choose, well, which one is it out of those two? All right. Mateo, ready for this? I'm going to use you as an example, all right? Mateo, do you like sports? All right. So, Mateo, I heard of this new sports store that's opening up. They're looking for people. It's called Rally House Sports. Have you heard of it? Just started seeing the commercials. They're all over. You could get, like, Temple. You could get Villanova stuff. Phillies, Eagles, Flyers, Gritty. You get the Sixers. You need, they got everything there. Sounds pretty cool, right? So you're applying for a manager position, all right? But the funny thing is, is, you know, you're already getting paid money, okay? So when you apply at Rally House, okay? Okay, they, they list your salary is gonna start at like $25,000. But let's say you are already at Dick's Sporting Goods and they already pay you $26,000. Well, why am I saying this? Well. When you apply for a job, Mateo, you can actually actually negotiate your salary with them. You can be like, hey, I really want to work for you guys. I really like you. Like, I want to be here. It's a cool store. It's closer to my house, but Fix is already paying me 26 grand a year. Can you guys pay me that? And this is what they use. They use this like little formula here. Let me show it to you. Okay. So Mateo, you're gonna be working for Rally House Sports and the average starting salary as for a new worker is $25,000. But the company, meaning me, the owner of it, I actually can have a little set. If I really want you, I can pay you a little bit more. If I don't want you, I can pay you a little bit less, okay? So they have this thing called an absolute deviation, meaning how much I can vary from that base salary, right? If you're gonna be a manager, you gotta get paid something. There's like a base salary that all managers get. You can be a little above or a little bit below. So it asked me to write and solve. This is gonna give me my range that me as like the store owner could pay you to try and get you to come to work for us. Does that make sense to you? So let's do this. So this is absolute value, deviation. Okay, so we have my absolute value problem. Now your starting salary, we don't know that yet, but I do know I want it to be around $25,000 based upon your qualifications, right? You're a little bit better, I can pay you a little bit more. But here's the thing, I don't want it to vary too much past $25,000. The owner and creator, the founder of Rally House Sports has told me I can only go within $1,800 of that. So the absolute value of your salary minus $25,000 must be within $1,800. So here's the range that you can get paid. So you have S minus 25,000 has to be less than or equal to 1,800, or we have S minus 25,000, 
must be greater than or equal to negative 1800. So I'm going to go ahead and add that 25,000. That's going to give me, Mateo, your max salary has to be less than 26,800. Meaning that's the highest amount of money I can give you. If you're really good and I want to get you away from decks because you bring in the customers, you got a sweet, sweet following on social media. You're going to put up those sales and are going to make money. I might pay you the $26,800, right? Which kind of works for you because you're already getting paid from Dix the $26,000, right? See how we have that negotiation room? Now, let's say, bro, like I just got to fill a position. You don't really stand out. You're just a dude. You come in, you work for your time, and that's it. Well, over here on the other side, well, this is going to give me my mid, meaning the lowest I could pay you without getting in trouble by the government. So they combine those, I get 23,200. So I need to be between 23,200, Mateo, if you're kind of like, don't stand out and don't bring anything to the table, or 26,800. Pretty big difference, right? Could you imagine being sitting around a table talking to everybody and be like, yo, Ben, like really excited to work here. Ben's like, yo, how much are you getting paid? He's like, I'm getting 23,200. And you're like, yo, I'm getting 26,800. He's like, but we have the same job. That's annoying, but that's what happens in the real world. That's why you got to stand yourself apart from your fellow coworkers. Make sense? Mrs. Simonian, I'm not lying about that, right? You are not lying. That's literally how it goes. And it also goes the same way with your bonuses at the end of the year. Now, I don't get a bonus. My bonus is hanging out with Ben. Take it or leave it. That's what they said. They're like, your Christmas bonus, you can hang out with Ben. It's a pretty bad bonus. Depending on who's looking at it. I think it's pretty cool, Ben. I think you're pretty fun. All right, so that's that, that's the lesson.